Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Fake Nerds Watch for Star Trek Picard. This is season two, episode nine, Hide and Seek, the penultimate episode of Star Trek Picard. I'm Brandon T. McClure. With me, as always, is Cookie from Just a Little Podcast. How you doing, my friend? Doing okay. I'm doing okay. I'm a little tired. A little tired. Long but day. Here. Long weekend. You're here, though. That's, it. That's all that matters. That's true. Okay, so... Let's get right into it. What did we think about this episode? I liked it. I liked this episode. It definitely filled um, a lot of things that we were kind of questioning of what was going to happen, how things were going to play out. And it definitely really sets up for the the next episode, the final episode. Yeah, it's certainly unpredictable. Yeah, I did not expect a lot. But there's not a lot here, I don't think. Just, I think just with Picard's mother. Um, yeah. With... Seven and Rafi's dynamic. I loved what we got. I always love seeing them together. Yeah, I think they're great. So I, there was a lot of emotions going on. Um, I think from every single character, this was like a really emotional episode for each character. Sure, except for Rios, who they keep sidelining, and I'm sick of it. I, I, it yes, it, but it's his fault why they sidelined him. It's it's. But every, 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 this whole season, he's just like, oh, Rio's got hit in the head. Time to move him over here. Oops. We, we got to go save Rio's from the, from the, 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 the bad people. Um, okay. We got him. Oops. Rio's now has to do this thing. And Rio's got to do that. Yeah. It's like, Rio's just be in the plot, man. Be in the plot. I want you in the mm-hmm. plot. I like you. Even this one, it was like, "Hey, we're gonna, maybe they're saving it for the final episode." If he's not in that, la- if he's not in season three, I'm gonna be so upset. You think so? you don't think he will be? Well, there's the there's the there is the concern that some people have had. Stay? Well, there's that. Is he gonna stay, or is he going to, or are any of these characters going to be in the next season because of the original oh, the TNG cast is gonna be in it? Mm-hmm. So, like. I I understand the fear and I understand the worry. I even share a little bit of it, although I don't believe necessarily that we're not going to see these characters because the TNG cast is going to be there. I'm I just I just want him in the plot, and because we've gotten so little of him that if this is like if this if we don't see much more of him, I'm going to be pretty upset because I I like him for sure. Um, I would like honestly in a in a perfect world the showrunner of this show is able to continue Star Trek Picard with Rios. Okay. I know a lot of people were talking about this after the beginning, in the beginning of the first episode of of this season. um, A lot of people talked about how the dynamic felt really good with him on the Stargazer, Mm -hmm. with him being the captain of the Stargazer. And I, I, ever since then have wholeheartedly agreed that um, wherever Star Trek Picard ends, I think the 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 I think the quote unquote fourth season of the show should be about Rios on the Stargazer. Mm-hmm. I can I can deal with that. Yeah, I think that's a I, good good idea. I really like to see that. I really like that character. I really like that ship. Oh, yeah. And progressing that story would be a lot of fun because you can have him intermingle with other characters, other legacy characters like Janeway or Dax, or you yeah. know, keep Seven and Raffi in in the loop. Like I. I wouldn't I, I i just wouldn't be opposed to that at this point especially at this point because i've seen so little of rios for sure i think it's definitely a good opportunity for a spin-off because i think like we both talked about last episode picard's not getting any younger or no. uh, yeah he's, he's not so well, either patrick stewart or picard they're not getting yeah. any younger <laughs> they're not getting any younger so it's like this this series is centered around picard mm-hmm. or ideally it's supposed to be centered around picard so I think if you were to go and use Rios as uh, now being a captain again, it would allow for more different spinoffs to take place solely from the Picard show. Yeah, and I think that the world of the 25th century, uh, going into the 25th century, because I think when the show ends, it'll be 2402. Mm-hmm. So like you could, you you just you keep going, you know, you keep boldly going. You just may, I I don't even mind if you like want to keep it as like a serialized Star Trek show like Discovery, like Picard. Um, you don't need to go. I don't need two strange new worlds, yeah. right? 
I've already got Strange New Worlds. I've got Lower Decks. I've got even Prodigy. Like I don't, I don't mind if you want to keep in that in that um, serialized Trek era, um, but with Rios and the Stargazer. I just, I just think that that's that's a. If Picard season three is the end of where we'll see this era, I'm I'm gonna be sad about that. Yeah, I can agree with that for sure. Yeah, especially because like. Everything else is set in the past now. Yeah. The Strange New Worlds is the 2350, no, 2250s. And then Lower Decks and Prodigy are around the same time in the 2380s. Okay. So, you know, I just want I just want more. <laughs> There's nothing just wrong me, with that. Just give me more. There's definitely nothing wrong with that. Um, okay, but let's let's kind of get into really the 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 I think really the only place we can talk about we can start is in the big reveals of the episode yes uh, so let's talk about picard's mother first mm-hmm. sounds good so now we know what happened to his mother his mother killed herself yes which i i did not expect them to show it the way they did at all yeah i think a lot of people felt the same way that it went dark really quick i i i like the fact that they did do it because mm-hmm. A lot of shows kind of just have it as, oh, you see, you see a silhouette, or you just see the bottom of the feet. First is this one. You literally opened that up, and it was her, literally hanging there dead. And yeah, it was it was a ton of bricks. It just you, you got hit by it. I I do think that this episode needed a needed a um, disclaimer mm-hmm. for sure. Cer- certainly at the end. Yeah. Um, I think that I think Moon Knight had it right when the first episode was like, hey, if you need help, seek it. Here's yeah. like a hotline or whatever. Um, I think probably this uh, Paramount Plus needs to consider going back into this episode and putting that and into the that. end of the end, end of this episode. But yeah, I think that that how they did it sheds a lot of light on Picard's relationship with his father mm-hmm. and kind of recontextualizes where we where what we know of his father which is that from from next generation which is that he uh he and his father just didn't get along yeah um maurice never liked that he was in starfleet um but we also kind of knew that okay uh canon hounds my 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 canon peeps if you're watching this i need your help because I'm pretty sure what I'm remembering is from the show and not from the autobiography of Jean-Luc Picard, which is non-canon. Um, but I think it's I think it's established in canon that Maurice was proud of was proud of Jean-Luc for being. I want to say he was. I definitely want to say he was proud. It just it wasn't necessarily expressed. Right. Like he couldn't express it. Correct. Um, now, I know that I know that is the case in the, in the autobiography of Jean-Luc of Jean-Luc Picard, which is a book that I read recently. Um, so I could be mixing the memory, but I do think that that, if I'm remembering it from the show, then it, it, it lines up that, you know, mm-hmm. like, cause you see Maurice, he loves Jean-Luc. He thinks yeah. Jean-Luc is a, is a, is an intelligent boy. It's his own son. And he would not run after his son frantically the way he did if he didn't care about him. Yeah. And I think the death of his mother, um, would have driven a wedge even deeper because Picard and Maurice, like Jean-Luc and Maurice never got along yep. and then go. And then after his mother passed away, there was just nothing left for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that, that kind of adds an extra tragic layer. I, I don't, I do appreciate that. It's never quite implied that Maurice blamed Jean-Luc for what happened to his mother mm-hmm. um, to Yvette. And I think that I think that's a really smart way to go about that, because that's it's such an easy way to mind drama. Just be like, oh, I blamed you for the death of my yeah. wife. And blah, blah. But that's not necessarily the case. But Jean-Luc does when he starts remembering it, mm-hmm. which is heartbreaking. It is yeah. extremely, extremely heartbreaking because I, I I've went through that with my dad. And for a small period of time, like a couple of months, I I thought that I was the one that kind of killed my dad off going through his disease and yeah and i didn't know at the time and it was like you kind of put that in the back of your mind you lock it away you throw away the key and that's exactly what picard did he he locked away that emotion that memory and he just did not want to relive that ever again which it's so traumatic as a kid to literally think 
I literally let my mom kill herself. I, I cannot live with that. So I'm going to go and put everything in reverse and lock it away like it never happened. Yeah. I, I the, the scene when he's looking at the skeleton key and he's like, I'm having the strangest memory. Yeah. It's something he hasn't thought of in, Ever. Ni- in 90 years, right? Like it's yeah, something exactly. that he just doesn't think about anymore. He doesn't remember it. Um, he he actively suppresses the memory every time it comes up. And then Talon is the one who's like, follow it. Mm-hmm. And that's Which when I, I really liked her character in this because she was almost like a, a psychiatrist to Picard. She was his like the angel and the demon on the shoulder type of thing. She was the angel kind of telling him like, hey, follow your heart. Follow what what's what it's telling you. Yeah. Now, that all said. This probably would have been better served in a different episode. <laughs> oh, yes. One hundred percent. I I I like that we got it. I just wasn't happy that we got it here. <laughs> yeah, because like action scene, action scene, action scene. Oh, Picard, your mother is uh, exactly. and then is, is sad. Drama. Yeah, it, it it's a little it's a little strange to put it here. Almost almost feels like an afterthought. Almost feels like it was an intentional. Like they they kind of ran up to the last episode and was like, oh shoot, we forgot to resolve this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't necessarily think that is the case. I just it, that's just kind of what it what it feels like as far as the yeah. episode is structured. But I like it because it keeps you on your toes. It's not where it's constant action, constant drama, but it does fluctuate. And you never really know what you're going to get in the next episode. Yeah. I still don't understand Adam. So <laughs> nobody, I don't think he understands himself. No, like I get what he's doing. He's trying to, he's trying to secure his the version right. of the future where he is famous. But like, what about his daughter? But he doesn't like, know. That's the thing. I, I was lost. How does he know about the future? The poor queen told her, uh, told him in the last episode. Did she actually tell him, or yeah. like, was it just like, because when I when I watched it and I I read it as she's just trying to manipulate him, and maybe that's what he's looking at. He's looking at it as okay, she's just telling me what I want to hear rather than actual fact. Well, in the in the last episode, one of the things I disliked about the last episode was that he, um, was that he looked at he was told like by by the Boar Queen. There's two features. One where Brene goes in the Europa mission is successful and that's the Federation. And then, and then another where the Europa mission is not successful and they turn to you for guidance and you become the godfather of the, godfather oh. of the, of the future. And yeah. like that's – and so like I guess you got to – you do kind of have to extrapolate that between scenes, between episodes, mm-hmm. she probably told him more. And probably that's where the manipulation came in of like okay. yeah, people – you have statues and people love you and we're beloved. Like he says, we're beloved across the galaxy. And like, no, you're not. Mm-hmm. You've destroyed the galaxy. Destroyed, yeah. Um, you've subjugated them. A safe galaxy is a human galaxy. <laughs> is what it, it, it's his quote. It's his quote. Yeah, that's playing in, 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 a, in a statue, in a holographic statue. So like, I, I still wish that was better handled. Cause I, I, I would have, I would care more if, Throughout the season, we have kind of gotten we've kind of gotten to know Soong a bit more and understood more of his motivations. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with that with that subplot at this point. Even though, and and the problem is, it's like the most pressing subplot at this point. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think that it un- unfortunately takes away from Q. It takes it away does. from it 100 percent does because this episode had no Q involved. There yeah. was no form of why are we doing what we're doing. It's yeah. to go and take care of the Q problem. And none of that was explored here. I wonder if Q did this on accident. Like it's just all unintentional. He's like, oh, I'm just going to go with the flow. Well, right, right. Like he didn't mean to make the Confederacy. He just kind of ran with it when he was just like, ah, oh, shit. Well, <laughs> like he can't did do something. anything now. He wanted to do something small, but ended up like changing dr- the future drastically. Exactly. But there's, there's other things that I've been thinking about in regards to Q because you brought it up. Like, I, I don't get it. If this is to help Picard coincide with his, like come to terms with his past, come to terms with what happened to his mother so that he can move on from it. Finally, like that's final gift. It kind of mm-hmm. feels like this is his final gift. Why do it this way? Why go about it this way? Why, why, why get to the point where you've now just actively destroyed the galaxy. And then if that is the case, why try to take an active part 
and making it so Rene doesn't want to be on the Europa mission because like you see him you see him try to give her bad memories and then mm-hmm. you see him act, be his be her therapist. Yeah. So like I don't understand how you could I, I just don't I don't get it. I don't get his plot. I don't get his what he's trying to do. It doesn't make sense to me at this point. I I I can stand back. I Looking back at it and trying to understand and trying to piece it all together, I think that it's very much he doesn't know what to do because now he's he doesn't have control. And now he's trying to learn how to go and do things without actually having full control. Yeah, but why is he doing this specifically? Out of anything else he could have done? Yeah. Like this is just this just seems so cruel. Like this is the most this is the most cruel we've seen Q. Like mm-hmm. you could look at it like you know, he look at Tapestry. Tapestry okay. is a good episode. It's a very good episode of Star Trek the Next Generation. It's the one where Picard is dying on his deathbed and mm-hmm. he just, and Q takes him back to the point where he gets his heart so he could do something differently and he and he teaches Picard that that was important for him to become the man he was like, it was a lesson. It was a good lesson. So it just, you take that instance where that was kind of a similar moment as this part, as what's happening here. And then you look at like, okay, so if it's revealed at the end, let's say hypothetically, it's revealed at the end. Q was like, yes, I did this all for you, Jean-Luc. I wanted you to reconcile the past with your mother and realize how, you know, how wrong your past has been and so you can move on so that you can evolve mm-hmm. okay why are you torturing renee he's actively torturing renee picard yeah. like actively he is actively trying to harm her and and trying to move and trying to position and, and, and trying to manipulate adam into losing Corey, but I still don't understand how Corey plays into this role, into this role <laughs> because she's only been in two episodes. Yeah. I think what are we doing? It's, it's, it's the, um, when you take something that's so precious to you, it motivates you in a different way. Mm-hmm. And I think that for Jean-Luc, Renee is that motivation because Renee is not just some random space girl off the street like their blood and if you look at the same thing with Sung, this is his legacy that's lived past what was it six months was the first or was the longest one yeah i think so so it's like this is this experiment has now become his legacy his passion and it's his soul and the same thing with jean luc pretty much renee has become jean luc's soul because without renee there is no jean luc now i can see kind of what you're going for i can see how perhaps uh he wanted jean luc to see renee and see how renee struggles so that he can piece it together with what happened to yvette Mm -hmm. so like he he looks at he gets to meet renee he gets to see that renee struggled with these with the same thing that yvette struggled with and and how he and through renee creates a, a better understanding for his mother. I can understand that. But why actively torture the girl? <laughs> like, Does it's just... he know any better? Yes! Does he? Does all he, he would, all he he would have care, to do... Though. He could care less. This, this weird plan, this plan to move Renee out from being... I don't know. I don't think Q's motivation... I, I, I get Q's motivation... I'm kind of understanding what he's, wh- why he's doing what he's doing. I just don't understand what exactly he's doing, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah, yeah. Because it it just doesn't. It the why doesn't make sense with that with the how. Like he's doing all these things to to help Picard evolve, help reconcile with his past, and yet just. I don't I don't see how A goes to B right now. I, I think it's I think it's like chess, where sometimes you have to sacrifice bigger pieces in order to win the game. I don't know. 
I hope it makes sense by the by the last episode. I do too. I do too. Because <laughs> I see I see like your your brain starting to steam a little bit trying to think about this and trying to make sense of it. Yeah, and it sh- we're episode nine. We shouldn't be we shouldn't be in this place. We should be we should be getting ready for the wrap up. Yep. Anyway, that's that's the Q problem. Let's talk about the Queen. Sounds good. Now, there's a good there's a good number there's a good number of stuff here with the Queen. Mm-hmm. Um, Gerardi has been able to kind of wrestle back some control and has created an emergency combat hologram. Yes. Uh, like Elnor. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, nice little... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, it was very weird. The fact that when we get to it, but the fact of certain interactions with people and mm-hmm. Elnor's like, almost like memory of, I missed you. Well, I want to touch on that when we get to that point. Yeah, uh, I do too, because it's weird. Okay. But Elnor has a um, portable uh, portable emitter on his arm. Yes, I saw that. Like the doctor. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Although, where did it come from? There's questions. Because <laughs> it just kind of he just kind of appears with it on. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So for the emitter, um, I definitely think that it was a nice, solid touch on that. Just and they actually made it as a focal point because they actually angled his arm. He looked at it, they point. So it was cool. But like you, Where how did it come get from? there? Why is it there necessary? Is it necessary to have that there? Yeah, right. Because he's in the ship, and the ship uh, you're able to. We've seen holograms can move around freely on the Anywhere. ship. Exactly. So yeah, that that's a little. That was a little weird. Yeah. Nice touch. Nice touch. Like seeing it again, but weird. Um. So he. So so so. It's cool to see Elnor get some action. I don't think that. I think at this point we're probably not getting that kid, that kid back. Uh, I, I once that happened, I instantly thought like, okay, we're gonna have Raffi kind of make peace with this is not gonna happen. However, that ship flew off, so I was like, oh crap, never mind, never mind, because yeah. I was on that path. If that ship would have stayed, well, yeah, like, because realistically it should because as far as we know that's the only way they could get back correct except now i'm pretty sure that q is going to bring them back which i think what's going to happen another plot that we do not need you guys have enough plots already now you just added the fact that the ship's gone the queen's gone what is she going to do how is she going to transport through time and then you have them stranded on earth not in their timeline you have Q who's involved in here, who's saying pretty much like Picard needs to get out of here and go back to his time. Mm-hmm. So you have added another layer into this thing. For what reason? It's another FBI agent. Why? So I don't necessarily think it's that bad. Okay. But I get you. I'm with you. Um, I do wonder. Okay. Let's talk about the queen. Let's just go. To... <laughs> okay. The queen. So the queen uh, is about to kill seven. Yes. And uh, Gerardi pleads with her to kind of be something more, to be different, because she, Ger- Gerardi knows that doesn't matter if there's a federation or a confederacy, the Borg lose. The Borg will always die. Correct. The Borg will always lose. And she's right. For the most part, she's right. Like the Borg have always lost against against the human race. So what... So what she proposes is to be a new Borg collective, which Correct. goes out and helps people, blah, blah, blah. Makes and them choose if they want to be assimilated. Yeah. Uh, so she warps off to the Delta Quadrant. She's not going back in time. She's not going to the future. Correct. She is. She's going to be 400 years in the past. Now, this is the boldest thing the boldest reinvention of anything I've ever seen in Star Trek. Because it changes the entire dynamic of everything. Yeah, it changes fundamentally the Borg. Yes. Now, I'm, I don't think... I, I, do, I do think that there, there's a couple places in this episode where this falls flat, but I do think the intention isn't that we're, we're seeing a new... We're seeing the Borg... Whole, the entire history of the Borg is now changed. I don't think we're seeing okay. that. Because she says there will be no tell Picard there'll be no use for Borg Slayer in the future, at least not from us. Mm-hmm. I think what I think what we've now set in motion 
Okay. So bear with me. I'm gonna pull up I'm gonna good. pull some strings here. Okay. Okay. So what we've now set in motion goes back to the first episode where a temporal rift opened. Okay. And the boar and the p- person on the other side of that temporal r- rift asked for Picard and then came through and there was a different Borg ship. It was a so different th- Borg ship than the Queen, than, than the one we've seen before. So you're thinking that because of this event here, it's now altered the timeline from before. I think you I think you were right that this was a paradox. Whoa! Look at that. Look at that. I think what I think (laughs) I think what we've just seen is the Borg from the Confederacy timeline. Okay. Deciding to go back into the future to to go to go off Mm -hmm. and they'll use temporal mechanics to go to the 25th century where we will now loop back to the first episode where we will end the season. That is goosebumps bro <laughs> i don't know if that's i don't know if it works see i don't know if it works but that's okay. kind of where that's kind of where i'm sitting right now with what with what this is because a lot of people were talking about like the fact that gerardi and the Borg queen are probably the the queen that we saw in the beginning of the stargazer mm-hmm. on the bridge of the stargazer so and that could be what happened like that like picard is about to kill a compassionate borg so like, like my the biggest thing though is i don't think this changes the borg Mm-hmm. I think the Borg history is pretty well intact. The uh, Delta Quadrant already has the Borg. Like the 21st century already had the Borg. Um, so would you say this is like an additional Borg? I think it's like a new Borg faction that's okay. just that's operating outside of uh, just kind of off in the peripheral of every event that we've seen. Okay. Um, they're they're there. They're around. They're helping. They're smaller. They're not necessarily. Uh, as, as impactful as the as the Borg Empire, mm-hmm. because you know the Borg are so big and so vast. I think this was kind of just off to this. This this became this is a small collective off to the side that you. we never needed to know about until now. I got you. Okay, I, I can I can stand behind that. I did like how she kind of used the Queen's um, thoughts and saying, "Okay." The way I'm going to get stronger is by using endorphins and your your natural body to go and generate enough energy. Yeah. And she reversed that back on her and kind of used that same exact tactic to go and say, I'm going to stop you because I have emotions now within you and I'm going to go and use those emotions to stop you. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, I did too. When, she, when she's like, why am I crying? And she says, it's not your tears, it's mine. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool. I think Allison Pill is really great in the season. I'm... Mm-hmm. I'm I'm sad to lose her. Yeah. Cause I think we just did. I think we, we just did, lost. Yes. I definitely think we did. Girardi. Um, and I'm sad about that. Cause I really like that character this season, this season specifically, I wasn't crazy about it in the first season, but this season specifically, I've really liked her. Um, I really liked, I really like Allison pill and I'm, I'm really bummed that we didn't get like a proper goodbye mm-hmm. for everyone else. Like re like Rios and Picard didn't get to say goodbye to Girardi. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have liked the kind of the kind of an issue that like I think probably COVID brought with this season was that like these actors couldn't always be in the same room together, and I mm-hmm. wish that they could have been because I would have liked more interactions with them. Mm-hmm. I can agree uh, with that. We had a lot of Gerardi alone with the Borg Queen, and I would have liked more of Gerardi with everyone else. You know who Gerardi reminds me of? Who? What's um, Tilly? Don't say that. I know, because I know you don't like her. <laughs> I know you like you don't like she's her. A, I think a, she's a lot better than Tilly. I know. She's a, I'm just joking. It was just the dynamic of her being there, leaving, possibly coming back. But yeah, I do th- one, it, it hurts more the fact that we're losing a, a good character and a good actor. Yeah, a character that honestly I'll miss. Like, yeah. I didn't notice Tilly was gone. Oh, uh, no. I know. I don't think anybody did. <laughs> so like I didn't care, but like I'll miss this character. I'll miss her presence on the ship. I'll miss her. Um yeah, I think the Borg ship that we see in the beginning of Stargazer, the first episode of the season, was the uh, uh, an advanced version of La Serena. Mm-hmm. Um kind of going coming everything full circle. I 
I hope that's what it is because like, I don't want to see, I don't want them to get to the future and be like, Oh yeah. The Borg have always been good guys. I don't want to see that. And Cause that everything's just all, all it ruins, up. it ruins everything. Yeah. It, 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 it like fundamentally, honestly, in my opinion, it fundamentally ruins the Borg. If that is the case. However, if they are just kind of this small Borg faction that have been existing outside of time or outside of space, just outside of the peripheral, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That doesn't change anything. That doesn't, that doesn't, nothing changes. Yeah. Uh, She'll probably be in the Delta Quadrant off to non-Borg space or whatever. Exactly. Whatever. Yeah. Question for you. Shoot. Just a little touch on the Tilly subject. Um, I think with Discovery... There are so many characters that are involved or not involved in the series that you don't care about them. And I think that Picard, the writers, changed that dynamic and made it a smaller cast so that you can care about each character a lot more. I'll agree with that. I've always felt that the cast of Picard, even in season one, was stronger than the cast of Discovery. Yeah, definitely. Um, Just because, like, the writers give the cast of Picard a lot more to do than Discovery. Mm -hmm. There's a more even in the beginning, like I understood there was a more there was a better sense that all these characters were more defined. Mm -hmm. Like I got I I understood them from the get go. But Discovery, four seasons in, I still don't know who the hell is there, who the hell uh, (laughs) the 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 tactical guy is. Right. Do you think Eleanor's body is still on the ship that's now gone off with the queen? And then yes. if it is, <laughs> it is. I just realized it. it. We can't get his body back. His body's gone. You're right. Okay. There's there is a there is there is a world that I can see at this the last episode. It, the last episode toward like maybe 10, 15 minutes towards the ending. Mm-hmm. Uh Picard learned his lesson and he was like, and for my final act, everyone's back in the future. But the moment that they that um, that the Borg Queen landed on the bridge. Okay. Which means everyone would be alive. Every, yeah. Okay. And everyone would have their memories. So, like, I could see that being the case. Mm-hmm. And as long as they have their memories, I don't think it, like, changes anything because, you know, whatever, that timeline was killed for a while. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't, I'm... I'm a little concerned going into the last episode because there's a lot of things that, that I think we're going to see in the last episode that we should have seen in prior episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, I think, think we're getting I think we're getting that Q Picard talk. I definitely think so. But I I'm scared for. Us not concluding the season, I feel like it's going to leave off on a cliffhanger. It won't. You don't think so? Well, the writer already said it won't. OK. All right. Cool. Yeah. He said that this is open and shut. We're okay. tying this off. It, it, uh, people saying it, ending with the cliffhanger probably should asking if it's ending with the cliffhanger should probably tell him that maybe, maybe we don't have the maybe people don't think we have the real estate to end this where it yeah. should. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's gonna end. It's not. It's gonna end. I just, I just hope it ends strong. This season you was you get a longer episode then. No, because they still got to deal with commercial breaks in other countries. Okay. That's why they're that's why they're like 45 minutes long is because they've got to deal with international distribution. Okay. Um yeah, I just hope that we get a good episode because I think the season started really strong and mm-hmm. and I really like a lot of the se- what the season has done. It's it's normalized a lot of discussions about uh, mental health. It's really dived into um what uh Picard's life as a child was, which we didn't really know a whole lot about it. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of a couple of mentions in that one episode, and so like, I seven think seven of nine, even the, yeah. the mind of seven of nine, diving into that. Yeah, we. I do wish we kind of got more of that because uh, I'm glad you brought that up because um, seven mentions that she did apply for Starfleet, but they said yeah. no at first because she was she was Bork. Yeah, and she said, and I really appreciate, like, you know, after Voyager, Janeway went to bat for me, but I, I told her no. I think that, I think that it would have worked. I think she would have been accepted into Starfleet had that, had she, but I think that doing that would have jeopardized a lot more for her. 
because it would have been she would truly have to really prove herself and go a way above and beyond every single time. And if anything ever happened, she's out because no. they're just looking for an excuse to get rid of her at that point. Okay. Um, counterpoint, Ichab. Mm -hmm. True. Do you know who Ichab is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's in, he was born. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. And he was in Starfleet. He, he was in a Starfleet uniform when we saw him die in the last season of Picard. Like, but he wasn't a captain though. No, but he, but it doesn't matter. Like he was still in Starfleet. And so, so seven was a very capable officer. She was a great science officer. Most yeah. science officers don't, don't become captains anyway. True. Like, very true. Okay. So like you, you get this point where like she could have just been in the science, she could have been in the science division. She could have been one of the, the, the best scientists the Starfleet ever had. Mm -hmm. And I think, had Janeway gone to the brass and been like, hey, I'm going to quit if you don't let her into Starfleet, they would have said yes. And she would have and she wouldn't have been a ranger. Yeah, that's the kind of not losing your one of your best captains ever. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not losing yeah, Janeway. <laughs> um, and so and I think that that's I think that that seven it's kind of telling that seven has this moment where she's just like, I didn't want Janeway to put herself out there like that for me. Mm -hmm. Um it is kind of sad and and yeah. it's kind of goes back to kind of goes back to what her arc this season is of, of accepting who she is um you know when she gets her her um implants back when she becomes a, a borgified again she has this talk with raffi where raffi just says you were never ordin ordinary you were always extraordinary like yeah. it is a, if you had accepted your borg self imagine how great you could have been like and that's that's the kind of thing that like Oh yeah, if I had accepted myself for who I was, I could have been a great Starfleet officer. For sure. You and know? it it had me I would say I kind of had glossy eyed because seeing her eyes, seeing Seven's eyes and her actually touching her implants again, it's like it just was a wave of emotions for her cuz she she now has become so used to not being a Borg and people seeing her just as a human versus Yeah. She was finally able to be Annika again. Yes, and then and, taken away from her. And Picard, when he sees her and just looks at her and goes, Seven, are you okay? Mm -hmm. And has this moment of like immediate acceptance of Seven. And and like, yeah, you're Seven, you're Annika, you're whoever you are. Are you okay, though? Is this, yeah. are you okay with what has happened to you again? Mm -hmm. And she says, I'm me. And so it kind of just like, okay, well, okay. That's when I got goosebumps. When she said, I'm me, I was like, oh, this is so good. Yeah, I I like what they've done with. I wish they'd given more to Jerry Ryan and and Michelle Hurd this season, mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad that we kind of shifted focus to them uh, in the last couple of episodes. It's honestly been some of the best uh, things that they've done in the final episodes is is shift focus to them. I agree because um, I think we should have had it a lot earlier. Yes, <laughs> at it, least we're here. Such a great dynamic between the two of them that it's kind of surprising that you don't flesh that out more because mm -hmm, people I want agree. that people genuinely want that i want that i think and if you get that rio spinoff it could be in it I'm just <laughs> it saying and i think i definitely think that this last episode is gonna have Rios just because it ended on a cliffhanger for him and the doctor them kissing it just oh yeah i'm sure the doctor's coming to the future yeah which since you speak of doctor she literally grabbed the pad and instantly know how to use it. No, no, she, no. She grabbed, she, sorry, I, since you brought it up, she grabbed a Romulan tricorder. Just, and just fiddling around with it. I'm like, how do you know how to use this? Is it, yeah, I kind of wish that, that Rios had like walked her through it a bit. But again, it's Romulan. It's not, like she can't even read the, the exactly. language that's on this tricorder. And I saw that her and funny. she's sitting there pressing buttons like, do you know what you're pressing? Because I don't know what you're pressing. Yeah, I don't. I, man, you give me a Romulan tricorder, I'm going to be like, this is, I shouldn't touch this because I'll probably kill you. <laughs> exactly. But look, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's, those are kind of the small things that like, yeah, those are the small things that we kind of have to wash away because of it. It's important. It's more important that character work happens than it is for continuity work. Correct. Yeah. Character has to trump it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, we haven't talked at all about it, and I'm going to to diverge our Picard talk to talk about how cool is the Strange New Worlds opening. Oh, dude. 
Oh, when I hear the sounds. Oh, baby. It just it revitalizes my my Star Trek spirit. Apparently, it's great. The reviews it, are raving. Okay, this is my question. Yeah. How do all these people get it, but you have two wonderful, good-looking Star Trek fans sitting right here, ready to go and talk about it. You guys don't even want to give it to us. We're here. How many, how many subscribers you got? On on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> Less than 400. <laughs> That's why. But, but, my podcast is coming up on 13,000 downloads. Oh, damn. Good job, dude. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I how many subscribers does that somewhere. mean? I don't know. I, yeah, I exactly. I, I have no idea. I think I'm See, at what? Under I don't. 120, down I, 120 episodes. I don't care about subscribership until something like this happens where I'm like, oh, man, I would have killed to have been there. I would have been, I would have loved to have gone to the premiere of that. Of that. They showed they showed the press for the first five episodes. That's half the season. Yes. And that's that's my thing is like, OK, I don't know why they always have to pick the elites like you guys could mix it up, get people who are 100,000 subscribers or whatever, get people who are at the 10,000 subscriber, get people who are under a thousand, get people just, who like, have 172 it. subscribers. There you go. And if <laughs> honestly, if I I'm not even joking with you, if I was to get it, I would honestly say Brandon deserves it more than I do. Not even well, joking with you. In fairness. I'm in the state that the premiere would happen. See, exactly. I would have to fly <laughs> from Florida over there. I'm like, hey, just give it to Brandon's. Did you? Okay, spoilers for Star Trek The Strange New Worlds. Anybody who wants to skip ahead. Um, I'm gonna, did you hear about the casting news? Um, apparently the first episode has Robert April, who is the first captain of the Enterprise. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, the first episode is Admiral Robert April, the first ever captain of the Enterprise, and they've okay. recast, they've gender, they've um, race swapped him. Okay, that's really so he's, cool. He's African American now instead of white. That's really cool. I like that. I think I do too. All that stuff is well worth it. And he, Robert April, existed has only ever appeared in one non-canon appearance, so, uh, which is Star Trek the animated series. So honestly, you can do whatever the hell you want. I don't care. Exactly, doesn't matter. <laughs> Since we are on. Just this little brief moment. Mm -hmm. You're Christopher Pike. You know how you're going to die. Yeah. How does that affect your life in this story, knowing that you will die this way this time? I'll be a little bit reckless. <laughs> Do you think that he is? Because yeah. we see it in the trailer, and it's just like him living his life, riding horses in the snow. At least that one moment. I don't know exactly how it fits in the timeline or how everything plays out. But it's it is in the beginning. Okay. Yeah, I I think the I think we're gonna see him be it be not like completely reckless with the ship and the crew. Mm -hmm. Like I think we'll just see him be a little, um, just like maybe go on a few away missions that he probably shouldn't be going on. Hit up Ryza every once in a while. <laughs> no, not even that. Just like, hey, this planet is deadly and it'll probably kill you. Let's send down some. Let's send down some security officers. And Pike will be. Like, I'll go. He's like, I'll go. <laughs> Want to see it? Okay. There you go. Not gonna kill me. Exactly. I know I when know I die. <laughs> um. Yeah. And it's not just because of the gold shirt. I'm there so excited go. for the show. I'm so excited for that show. I am. I I pray and hope that they take. All the collective information that people have poured out, poured their heart and soul out about uh, Discovery, about Picard, about Lower Decks, about even Prodigy, and combine all of the, the successes and the failures that have happened in these shows and learn from them. Yeah. I got a bit of a crush on, on the helmsman of the Enterprise right now. Really? She's really cute. She's really cute. Can, are you looking it up right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it's a. I think her name is Ortega, Lieutenant or Ortega. I love. I love hearing the clicking, clacking of a of a of a computer. I'll, I'll mute myself. <laughs> no, no, I'll it's fine. My phone. No, I like it. Um, oh, okay, but while you're while you're while you're doing that, let me see if I have any more notes. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all the notes I had. I'm, I'm, uh, I think that's how we can probably wrap this up. 
Oh. Yeah, right? She's cute, oh, right? She is. Something I like. I've always. Uh, we'll talk later. <laughs> I'm not going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. Um, I, but I, I, I do. Think... I, I definitely. I think she's, yeah. She's definitely yeah. a very attractive. And I like the the hair thing she has going on. Yeah, I like that they kept stupid hairstyles in the 23rd century. There you go. Um, yeah, as far as Picard goes, I hope we get a strong season ender. This mm-hmm. this won't be my favorite new season of Star Trek. It, Lower Decks will continue to will continue to have that crown unless Strange New Worlds completely blows me out of the water. Well, there's a possibility. There's definitely a possibility. I really hope it does. I really hope it does. Um, so yeah, I think that's um. I think that's it. Unless you got anything more you want to add? Um, no, I, I think I'm I'm excited for the the last episode of the season. Yeah. Sad, but I'm excited because sad that it's going to end and it's going to be a while before we get another one. But I'm excited that this was so far a success. As far as I know, Picard season three is stopped, has ended filming. So let's see. Okay, so Strange New Worlds has has filmed its second season. Picard season three has filmed its, sec- its third season. Picard has spil- filmed this pr- third season. Discovery hasn't filmed its fifth season yet. So I think I'm just speculating. I think what we mm-hmm. can possibly look at, we're looking at lower deck season three after strange new worlds. Yep. Um, then prodigy they'll air the last 10, probably the last 10 episodes of season one of, of prodigy. Okay. Uh, so we, so that's done. And then I think either Picard or or that that leads us to the end of the year. So we're probably looking at Strange New World season two or Picard season three. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say Picard season three. Starting when? Like maybe next year, early next year? Probably like January, February. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can see that. Um, they probably will also take a break. Um, yeah. Because I I think that I think airing this man, this many Star Trek shows in a row is is rough. When is Orville? happening june oh okay all right one more month yeah um okay so that'll do it then thank you once again cookie absolutely it's my pleasure um hopefully maybe mike will join us for the last episode he hasn't he's been a little radio silent lately so i called him up actually and i had a had a little talk with him and see how he's doing he's just been slaving away at work I'm um, sure. Um, I'll see if he wants to do at least Strange New Worlds because I'd love to get him on that one too. Absolutely. Um, okay, so that'll do it. So, Cookie, plug your stuff. Sweet deal. Um, you can find me on social media at Just Little Podcast on Instagram at Just Pod. Yeah, on Instagram, Just Little Podcast on Twitter, Just Podcasting. I'm on TikTok, Just Podcasting as well. I believe throwing up some unboxing on there. I've been on YouTube a little bit more um i have a patreon hop on there patreon.com slash just little podcast sign up today you can get access to exclusive shows hopefully later on i want to say later on this week i'll be dropping a new episode for the halo series i might drop two episodes back to back we'll see what happens so i can catch up on that because i've been slacking and then yeah see what happens Mm -hmm. i'll be on here so good shit cool man well appreciate it once again um absolutely of course, this is Fake Nerds Watch. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Check out all sorts of other Fake Nerds watches, such as the other Star Trek shows we've done. We've done Discovery and Lower Decks and the first season of Picard. Um, currently, Moon Knight is our other Fake Nerds Watch series that is happening at the same time as this. Um, we just recorded a new episode that should be up by the time, probably by the time you're watching this. Um, and the last episode of Picard is coming up. And then we'll just continue right on to Strange New Worlds because hell yeah. I'm so excited for that show. You and me both. Um, oh, the, the space, the final frontier. I'm so happy we finally got to hear those words again. Five year mission. Um, it, it, probably, I think Pike's on his third five year mission when we yeah. when, when we're doing this. Okay, but well, that doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, check out. All sorts of other shows we have on this channel, such as Basement Arcade, Basement Arcade Pause Menu, Animation Station, Fakner Book Club, and of course our main show, our mother's show, Fakner Podcast, where we go live late every Sunday um, to check out, uh, just a, to do a movie review, to do a book club, just talk about some news. Um, the movie that we just did was The North Man, Robert Edgar's Eggers, The North Man, and coming up, 
Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Awesome. Mute all your words on Twitter because spoilers are rampant. Really? I've already been spoiled. Oh. Yeah. Sons of biscuits, man. I only one small thing, and I kind of already knew it was happening, but I wish I didn't know. I wish I didn't have a confirmation. Gotcha. Um, and so after that, I just muted all my words. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's everything, guys. Um, of course, we have a T Public, we have Patreon if you want to support us like that. Um, uh, Fickner Podcast on all the social medias. I am BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I also write for Screen Rant, where I write a ton of stuff. Um, I do. Uh, revisiting the Infinity Saga series as well as other pieces um, up on AtomicGeekdom.com you can check that out and I edit for KaijuRamenMedia.com yeah that's it awesome, All right. awesome. awesome stuff again like this video subscribe to our mm -hmm. channel until next time we see us live long and prosper live long and prosper